What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com um, Hey, this video is a continuation of a video I did a little bit before the creating a spike ball in SketchUp with Scatter So um, if you haven't watched that tutorial, you may want to start there because I refer back to it a couple times um, But basically this is a video about uh, scatter or using the SketchUp extension Scatter to create a uh, Koosh ball toy shape so um, if you need a link to that, uh, SketchUp isn't letting me do the annotations because I have the in screen option enabled. So uh, just go back to uh, the last 20 seconds of this video and I will link to that video at the very end. So maybe go watch that video and then come back and check this one out. If you'd like to give Scatter a try, make sure to visit thesketchupessentials.com slash scatter to download a 15 day free trial. So thank you very much for watching. So the other thing I'm going to do is I don't remember if you guys remember the uh, Koosh ball toys like the basically the ball that had a whole lot of uh, it was almost like fur on the outside of the ball. I'll throw a picture up here in the video if I remember to. But basically what it was was it was like a rubber ball that was that had a whole bunch of like rubber pieces coming off of it so it was like super soft. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of recreate that with scatter and a component. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off and uh, you see how when you turn on the circle tool by tapping the C key it goes to sides 24. So we're going to take that down to something a lot more manageable. So we're going to take that so tap the C key and then tap in something like 8. So it's really more of an octagon, but when we model something really small like this it's not going to matter. So just come in here and you're just going to You're basically going to create the smallest circle that you can. So on mine, that's a sixteenth of an inch radius. And then what we're going to do is we're going to extrude that into kind of this long length, just like this. And so basically what we're doing is we're creating the spines that are going to go on this uh, Koosh ball object. So then come in here and select that, right click, there you go, and make it a component. And you can just call that and so now what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to use uh, UV mapping to, to basically come in here and scatter these all over the face of this surface. So what you're going to do is you're going to come in here and you can either start a new version or you can go to render list and just add a new object and scatter. So just go to this list and click plus and that should pop up a new version of this. Otherwise just start a new one. Um, and basically what we're going to do is the same thing that we did before. We're going to select our host which is this ball right here. And then we're going to select the object that we're going to scatter which is this guy right here. So you can start off and you can go ahead and generate that. And we got the same kind of issue that we had before where it just sticks a couple of these on here uh, facing out. And so now what we want to do is instead of using faces centers like we did before, we want to use random in our distribution. So come over here and click random. But then the other thing you need to do is you need to select wrap UV. And wrap UV, what that does is it wraps your objects around. It wraps your objects around just like this. So when you do that, you're you're going to have to go ahead and um, move your pointing up to normal again. But you can see now what that does is it puts these outward, um, kind of perpendicular from the face that it's on. So now if I click regenerate, it's taking these points and sticking them outward. And uh, the thing with something like this, when you do it random, is basically you specify a density. So you say how many items per unit that you want in here, and the higher this number gets, Right, so if I come in here and I change this to 0.75, you see how it puts more of these on here. And so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna create a whole bunch of these. So we're gonna run this up. And you have to be a little careful and scatter to not um, jump this up too high because what you can end up doing is adding thousands and thousands of objects in here. But let's start off and let's put it in here as 0.1. Okay, now we can jump it up to one. There we go, that's more what we're looking for. So if you come in here and you set this to one, and again, you gotta be a little careful when you generate all this stuff because you see how now my SketchUp model is dragging a little bit because it's just rendering so much stuff. But what it's done is it's taken those points and it's just kind of spread them all around this face. 
So you've got kind of this cool you've got you've got this same shape where you've got all these little point these little rubber points coming out here just like a koosh ball would. Um, if you remember that toy. And so the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna come in here and you're gonna color it. And the other thing you may want to do is come into your styles, and I talked a little bit about these in the past, but all of these, look at your styles and pick one that has a little stopwatch next to it. Uh, that means that it's a fast modeling style. Um, so that's a style badge, basically, is what it is. So what you're going to do is I'd select maybe this shaded with textures would be a good one. So you see how that loads a lot quicker when I rotate around it. So we've got our basic koosh ball shape, which is cool. And um, I mean, at some point, if you just want to stop here, you can definitely do that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to also color the center of this, that same color. So this color L04. So now that the center kind of looks like a general rubber ball. And then we're going to do the same thing in the rendering software that we did before where we come in here and we set the material, which it should already be set, but you can use a little eyedropper to select the material. There we go. You may have to click around in there a little bit. So you can use the eyedropper in here to select the material, and then you can use the same material that you had before, the wax material, or you can try something different. And then all you're gonna do is you're just gonna run it through your rendering software. So I'm gonna leave this set on preliminary for right now. Um, and it's going to take a little bit longer because there's so many more faces than the other object that we did earlier. So you're going to have to sit here and this is probably a good time for you to go get a cup of coffee or something like that while your renderer is working. Um, but you want to start off with preliminary to make sure everything kind of looks the way that you want it to look. And then you can come back in and, and bake it a little bit more if you want to and make it a little bit more realistic. So anyway, I'll speed this process up in the video. So uh, be back in a minute. All right, so the rendering is complete. So you can come up here and you can save your image or you can come in now. Um, running a preliminary render is always a good idea to make sure everything's kind of spaced the way you want it to be spaced and stuff like that. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up here. So you can take this and you can uh, you can really do whatever you want with it. I mean, again, I mean, I'm always trying to teach principles on this channel. So I understand that these may not be the most crazy models or anything like that but I am teaching you strategies that you can go use um, in order to uh, model things that you need to model and stuff like that so anyway if you wouldn't mind taking a second and clicking that like button down below I'd really appreciate it um, also if you're new around here make sure you click that subscribe button I'm coming out with new SketchUp stuff every week love to have you along for the ride and um, finally leave a comment below let me know uh, if you're doing stuff like this uh, if there's a better way I know scatter is a little bit of an expensive plug-in um, if you've come up with something different that you've used to do something like this let me know I'd love to hear about it but I just love to have a sketch up conversation with you guys so um, anyway I just want to say thank you for watching again and I'll catch you in the next video